Yo, what's up guys? Welcome back to a brand new video. Today, we're going to test a top of the line water cooler and compare it to my top of the line air cooler. This video is sponsored by Be Quiet, so please check them out. I know you guys know them probably already because they're a big name. And personally, I've been using them for a while. Uh, fans and my previous CPU cooler, which is their best CPU air cooled cooler. So I guess you could say I'm a big fan. My old cooler already has a TDP of 250 watts, which is insane. And with perfect amount of thermal paste, it should cool my CPU as is. But as an overclocker, I like to take things to the next level and my voltage on the CPU is already stupidly high. So the better the cooler, the better the results. Now the fan and the air cooler I bought with my own money. Those weren't sponsored. But let me show you what they sponsored for this video. So let's start at the bottom. They gave me these free light wings, as you can see by the box, which is very thick. They are 140 millimeter fans and they got RGB on the front and on the back. And as you can see on the corners, you have the rubber padding, which prevents vibrations through your metal PC case. All right, let's talk about the big guns, the Silent Loop 2. It has a 360 mil radiator with 320 mil fans and a very quiet pump specifically designed for this AIO cooler. They also have different sizes, 120 millimeter, 240 millimeter, and 280 millimeter. It does have RGB on the pump and they basically made everything more efficient. So heat transfer, they made it even quieter and use less power, which obviously results in an even quieter playtime. Although there isn't a TDP on the box, I found some results on the internet and people are saying it's around 450 watts of a TDP, which is just crazy because my i7 8700K at five gigahertz with my 1.34 volts V core, which is crazy high, uses about 180 watts. So it is running hot normally and I won't spoil anything, but the results are very promising. All right, so I wanna show you some benchmarks, but before I do this, let me show you the unboxing and the installation of the fans and the AIO cooler, of course. Here you can see the ARGB hub that comes with the free fans. If you have a Be Quiet PC case, you are able to switch the colors through the button on the top panel. As you can see, I installed the fans to the case and it's looking good. Not as good as the water cooling, which is looking even sexier. Out with the old, in with the new. Here's how it looks with the default style, pulsing orange light. But you have plenty of other options. You can change the mode, the color, the brightness, and you can change the speed of the pulsing slash flashing on the RGB. If your motherboard has a RGB controller, you can obviously connect it to that and change it through some software. But sadly, my motherboard does not have that option. So I was just using the physical controller that came with the fans. Also the cooler and the fans are connected to the same RGB controller. All right, so now it's time to benchmark both my old cooler and the new cooler with the exact same voltage, gigahertz settings and everything. I'm gonna start by doing a Cinebench R23 test. After that, we're gonna do a gaming test in BeamNG, which is a CPU heavy game and a titanic benchmark which is kind of a game but not really it does have ray tracing in it as well so it's a different load and uh, yeah let's see okay so on both tests the ambient temperature in my room was about 24 or 25 degrees celsius and the old cooler let the cpu go to a hundred degrees c which is the tj max of the cpu and it was almost instant because obviously the fans and everything has to kick in and i have a 1.35 v core on my cpu which is a lot <laughs> so uh, it doesn't ramp up like a normal CPU would, it is always at that voltage and at like 4.9 gigahertz. I did delete the CPU, so the temperature per core can be a little bit different, but my liquid metal job was good enough. Anyways, the second hottest core, which I will be looking at, was 95 degrees Celsius, and it did downclock to 4 gigahertz from 4.9 which is not good of course. The cores all jump back to like 50 degrees C instantly after the test. So I don't think it's a bad connection between the liquid metal or the CPU and my cooler. 
The power consumption was about 150, 140 watts. I think 150 was the peak. And the score was 85, 86 for the old cooler in the Cinebench R23 test. The new cooler already had a better ambient temp. It was seven degrees cooler at ambient but to be honest, the thermal paste application wasn't perfect on my old cooler, although it was definitely good enough for the test. Now the hottest core with the new cooler got to 96 degrees and the second hottest core, which I'll be looking at, was 86 degrees at maximum, which is nine degrees cooler than the previous test, which is significant, but not only that, all the cores stayed at 4.9 gigahertz at all times. And of course, this resulted in a higher score of 9715, which in percentage, I'll put it on screen, is this much higher than our previous score of 8586. Right after the test, all cores jumped back to 40 degrees Celsius. The wattage stayed about the same at like 140, 150 watts. So that gives us the conclusion that I am bad at overclocking and that this cooler is an absolute beast. Now let's do the other tests. As you can see in the right screen, BeamNG Drive is a very CPU heavy game and I chose a stupidly fast card so the map will have to load in as fast as possible which puts more strain on the CPU as well. With the new cooler, the CPU package highest core temp was 71 degrees C compared to the 89 degrees C with the old cooler, which means a 18 degree drop at about 110 watts of power. The RTX Titanic demo is also a very good example for a real life scenario. You can tell that the new cooler is keeping it chilly with the hottest core reaching 73 degrees C compared to the toasty 100 degrees C max temp on the old cooler. All right, so what did you guys think of these results? Let me know down in the comments. Personally, I think this cooler is perfect for people like me who try to squeeze out the most performance out of a CPU. But I do recommend this cooler to anyone though, just because it's so quiet. And obviously there's other choices on Be Quiet's website with water coolers, air coolers, all different sizes. So if you don't have this beefy of a CPU, but still wants a quiet system, you can try the 120 millimeter uh, water cooler or let's say a air cooler from them. So there is cheaper options from Be Quiet as well. Or if you just want to upgrade your PC fans like I did in the beginning, just get some fans from them. They just released new fans actually because they are celebrating 20 years, which is insane. I've only been using their products for like six so 20 years is crazy, but yeah, they release new stuff. So check it out. It's just bequiet.com. And uh, yeah, again, thanks to Be Quiet for sponsoring this video. It was an honor to be sponsored by them because I already use their products. And thank you guys for watching. Leave a like and subscribe and comment down below what you thought of this. And yeah, check the Discord and the Twitch and peace out guys. Peace.